I'm Stephanie, and this is Snowdome of the Day. Although today could be Snowdomes of the Day or Salt and Peppers of the Day. Because they're two domes, it's a pair of salt and peppers. They're in the shape of a television. It's an old school television. How do you know? It's got tuning knobs on the front of it. Um, just a hot tip, if you choose to collect salt and pepper snow dome television salt and pepper shakers, always look to see if the plastic tuning knobs are still on the front. They usually are not, and it increases the value of these salt and pepper snow dome salt and pepper shakers to at least $5 if those souvenir tuning knobs are still present. Beware, sometimes people glue um, seed beads on to try to fool you. Not the same. Anyway, today's snow domes are of Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox. But there's a bit of a trick. As I'm sure you know, Paul Bunyan and Babe live in more than one place in the United States of America. I've been to visit them in Bemidji, Minnesota, but today we see the representations of them from the Redwood Highway in California at a site called Trees of Mystery. The domes are helpfully labeled. Um, this one says Paul Bunyan and the Redwood Highway, so you know the road that you took. Do you see Paul? He's got trees. This must be before he started chopping them down. And then in the other dome, we see Babe, oh, the blue ox, and it says very clearly, trees of mystery. These are the trees of mystery. <coughs> um, and so you need both snow domes in this set to really know where you are, but also so that you have both the salt and the pepper. <laughs> so, um, Paul and Babe are a pretty, a pretty great story. Um, I'm sure there's some environmental concerns about their work. There's probably some concerns about the relationship between Paul and Babe the Blue Ox, although I'm glad that Babe's got Babe's own power in the relationship, partly due to um, the strength and size of Babe. Um, I have not spent time looking up the canon of uh, Paul Bunyan's stories to really rehearse them all to give you a geopolitical, philosophical critique of them. Maybe if you're bored, that's something you would like to take on. <laughs> or better yet, we could have a haiku contest about Paul and Babe. Hmm, that's something to think about for late August. But um, I do celebrate mythological tales that we create about our environment, about our spaces. Um, you don't have to have uh, a castle, you don't have to have a dramatic background to be able to tell a really great story. And I give thanks for that. And I give thanks that the characters that we create um, can inspire us and can remind us of other stories that might be, shall we say, more real life. Um, I also celebrate these tourist destinations. It was really fun to visit Bemidji. We saw friends there. We had really tasty food there. We got to see wild rice growing. Um, and we got to see a gigantic statue, which was really super fun as well. So I celebrate these memories. I celebrate the ones that have come. And even though at the moment I'm more um, interested in tiny things because I can create them, like fairy houses for the kids at church, um, I still really enjoy how we as people find new ways to describe and interact with our environment. No matter um, what crises are going on in the world or in our home, I, I really value the power of story. I value your stories and as people of faith, I value the stories that we find in the scriptures. We're working our way through the Gospel of Matthew at St. Paul, and there's wonderful stories there that are informing my summer. I hope you're having a good summer, and know that we cherish our stories together.